brain tumours are actually quite uncommon. Um, you can think of brain tumours as being primary tumours that have arisen from cells within the brain or secondary tumours uh, that spread to the brain from other cancer sites like the lung. And if you consider primary brain tumours, then the incidence of these is about uh, 8 per 100,000 uh, per year. So that would mean in the whole of Scotland there would be about four or 500 patients each year presenting with a brain tumour. If we think about secondary brain tumours or metastases, uh, it's a bit easier there because in about 80% of people um, they're already known to suffer from cancer, so anyone who presents with headaches or neurological signs, it's to the forefront of the general practitioner's mind. But about 20% of them will present um, with neurological symptoms and be not known to be suffering from a brain tumour initially. And so if we think of this in a, a sort of GP sense, there are about 5,000 general practitioners in the whole of Scotland. So a GP would see approximately one new brain tumour patient every 10 years. Well, we did a study in South East Scotland a number of years ago looking at that very question. And um, we looked at over 300 patients who had a single intracerebral lesion, most likely a tumour. And we asked them what their very first symptom was that took them along to their general practitioner. And we found that the most common symptoms were headache, which was about 25% roughly, presented with headache as the very first symptom, and seizures, about 20% presented with seizures as the very first symptom. Focal neurological symptoms such as weakness down one side, uh, problems with speech or uh, problems with memory were actually relatively uncommon as a very first presenting feature. But then when we went to ask them at the time of hospital presentation, what symptoms did they have? And we took a lot of this from the notes as well. Um, we found that although headache was present in um, almost 50% of patients, focal neurological symptoms had become much more frequent. And we felt that this was probably the most likely reason that these patients presented to hospital was the focal neurological symptoms, which uh, alerted them that there was something, some problem and the reason that they went along to see their general practitioner. Well, if you look at the patients whose first symptom was focal weakness or numbness down one side or a problem with their speech, the time that they took to get to see um, the hospital doctor was in the region of two or three weeks, a median of two or three weeks. Whereas if you look at the other conditions, um, they took much longer. And by the time they reached hospital presentation, they quite commonly had symptoms like focal weakness or numbness. So it seems likely that it's the focal weakness or numbness or dysphasia that alerts the, either the patient or the general practitioner that there's a serious underlying cause and hence the referral to hospital. Patients with um, personality problems or visual problems took much longer to get into uh, hospital practice, probably in the region of a median of 14 to 16 weeks. Some headaches are due to raised intracranial pressure and in, in children, tumours are more commonly in the posterior fossa and therefore block the fluid pathways and cause obstructive hydrocephalus. So in children, they're more likely to present with um, headaches and vomiting, the rather classical picture of raised intracranial pressure. However, in adults, tumours are predominantly in the cerebral hemispheres and in these cases, headaches are not necessarily the same as the type that you get with raised intracranial pressure. Um, they're due to um, movement of either the dura or the blood vessels being stretched. And these are local tumor type headaches and have slightly different characteristics that are more nondescript. Well, papilledema is uh, quite difficult to pick up sometimes, particularly if you're not used to looking for it. In that study we did of over 300 patients presenting to hospital, papilledema was identified in 12% of cases and about visual field defects were identified in about 10% of cases. 
And the thing is that the papilledema and the visual field defects were often not complained about by the patient, so they were picked up on examination. Most patients who complained of sensory symptoms, uh, that drew the doctor's attention to that part, the limb or, or, or the speech, and they were examined in more detail and often had neurological signs, focal neurological signs. Patients with personality problems and memory problems um, were more difficult to pick up at the time of hospital presentation. They were often brought along by their relatives complaining of memory problems or change in personality. Uh, but the majority of these patients also had headache at the time of hospital presentation. So one point I'd like to try and get across is if someone has headache and change in personality or memory problems, these are patients you should take seriously. I think the important points are that not all patients who have uh, brain tumours have characteristic headaches of raised intracranial pressure and uh, papilledema and visual field defects are often not actually complained of so it's important for all general practitioners to check visual fields and fundi in patients who they suspect might have uh, headaches suggestive of papilledema or patients who they're worried about. Um, if they do identify papilledema it's a red flag and patients must be referred urgently to a hospital for a CT scan and for further evaluation. I'd also like to stress that it's important for GPs to look for headaches plus, that plus being either personality problems or problems with memory.